All right. I would like to get, uh, make it clear what the theorem is. Uh, not due to me. Uh, or there are several theorems, as a matter of fact. The first one is due to McCulloch and Pitts, uh, which was the 1943 that a certain kind of neuron that they were fascinated with uh, could um, exercise any logical, ca uh, do any logical calculations. Another theorem along the same line was in Minsky's PhD thesis, which he sh in which he showed that any element that had uh, essentially what it amounted to negative resistance uh, could do it. Now, the simulation theorem would say the following, that the time required to simulate a device with 10 to the 10th components would si be simply proportional to the number of components, provided you have a large enough memory, that is a 10 to the 10th element memory, uh, to do the table lookups in. Now, one certainly would not advocate um, having an intelligent machine that would uh, do this by uh, simulating the neuro net, neural net in the brain. In the first place, you can't find out what the neural net is. And in the second place, there are uh, almost certainly better ways of doing it, since the neural net in the brain um, is, quite, uh, uh, is quite inefficient. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, there are some mathematical theorems that say that the uh, time required would really be only linear in the amount, number of components. But that is only if you can unravel this extraordinarily complex network and decide how it, uh, it, it, it does it. And well, I, I respect, I feel that, that is not so. Uh, Minsky's perceptrons uh, and so on uh, uh, were obviously a very interesting investigation. It's not certain that the, um, uh, that the neurons uh, are, are all of this type, as I say, the Minsky's ones in the against visual, perceptrons. The, yes, I know. He's written a book recently which, which, which sums up and says that uh, they haven't got us anywhere. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, uh, and um, uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the detailed work on the visual cortex has shown uh, that, that, that various specialized hardware, as, uh, as a computer architect would speak, or is involved in uh, the discrimination between edges, vertical edges, discrimination, distance, and so on. Donald Mickey? Uh, I wonder if I could follow the combinatorial explosion just a little, and first of all ask whether the problem of programming a computer to play chess is a reasonable instance of the kind of difficulty that you have in mind. I think, in fact, you've quoted it uh, as an instance. Uh, there's an alternative of about 20 moves, 20 legal moves at each stage, so that you can work out, and my colleague I.J. Good has worked out, that the total number of possible chess games is of the order of uh, 10 to the 120, which is more than the number of uh, elementary particles in the observable universe. So that if you want combinatorial explosions, that's quite a nice big one. There are two ways. <laughs> Uh, two lines of approach that artificial intelligence people attempt to use to damp off and combat the combinatorial explosion. Roughly speaking, they can be grouped into syntactic methods of cutting down this wild branching ratio on the one hand and on the other hand, and in the long run, much more significant and more promising uh, ways of building semantic information into the program in order to cut out uh, whole branches of the search tree. Most of the progress that has been made with computer chess so far, in fact almost all of it, would come under that first and rather primitive category. And in spite of that, I think you said yourself, the present level of computer chess is perhaps uh, a middling club player, you said an experienced amateur. Um, have you, first of all, uh, read the article in the June issue of the Scientific American where the first uh, program with semantic uh, uh, with semantics built in um, has been described and looked at the quality of the game that's there cited. Secondly, um, you mentioned David Levy and you mentioned Botvinnik, the former world champion. Uh, do you know about David Levy's bet and do you know about Botvinnik's comment on it? Yes, so I do. And of course, the interesting thing is that this. Uh, Would one of you tell us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, David, David Levy is an international master, 
and in 1968 he wagered a thousand pounds against a consortium uh, that no computer program would beat him across the board in a 10 game match uh, before 1979. It had to be done by the end of 1978. I can reveal the identity of the consortium. Uh, it consists in fact of Seymour Papert, John McCarthy and myself. <laughs> now it seems to me <laughs> that if your pessimism is as deep-rooted as you wish us to believe and the power of the combinatorial explosion, everything that you've stated, you should be ready to double that stake. <laughs> I picked on chess because it's an area where one can put in a maximum amount of human knowledge and experience of something that human beings have been very active in for centuries and one can feed in through the heuristic um, as, as much as possible. Uh, the, the heuristic has been the main method of uh, of reducing the impact of the com combinatorial e explosion and um, even in spite of, of this uh, one is able to uh, reach uh, in a fairly modest universe of discourse the chessboard with its 64 squares one is able to reach the kind of um, uh, levels of, of play that, uh, that, that we've described. Um, the program that you saw in fact involved not a complete uh, search of every um, uh, possibility in the tree. There was um, a rejection of possibilities at an early stage if um, the position started deteriorating fast uh, and um, uh, so a certain selection from the more promising lines was, is made in this program and the programs have been constructed with a very great deal of ingenuity. It's been one of the classic problems in um, computer science, uh, something that everyone would like to solve. Com computer firms have, have, have tried because they would like to see um, uh, a success of computer against um, a master or grandmaster in this field. But nevertheless, this has not been achieved and David Levy still doesn't seem to think it will be achieved and I agree with him. I think that I would like, if I might be allowed to utter a small warning here dredged up from the remote past nearly a hundred years ago. It is in fact a very short excerpt that I want to read from a report. It was a report submitted on November the 15th, 1876 uh -huh. to the President of the United States Telegraph Company. And it goes as follows. Mr. G. G. Hubbard's fanciful predictions, while they sound very rosy, are based upon wild-eyed imagination and a lack of understanding of the technical facts of the situation and a posture of ignoring the obvious technical limitations of his device, which is hardly more than a toy, a laboratory curiosity. Mr. A.G. Bell, the inventor, <laughs> is a teacher of the hard of hearing, and this telephone may be of some value for his work, but it has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. Yes. <laughs> if I had given my talk ten years ago, um, it would have been a very reasonable response uh, to, to, res to respond by, by quoting uh, what was said about Bell's inventions within a year or two after they'd started to be investigated. But uh, the situation is different when one's past the quarter century of a field like, like artificial intelligence. This is a, then one comes into a period where uh, some of the fundamental difficulties have, have begun to, to emerge. I have made it clear that I support a great deal of the work uh, that is done by people calling themselves the artificial intelligentsia, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, <laughs> uh, but I, I have all also argued uh, that uh, enough of the fundamental objections uh, and difficulties have um, now I I emerged so that one can feel um, one, one can feel dubious to a very high degree about <coughs> predictions of a general purpose robot. Well, perhaps uh, this is a good time to leave the artificial intelligentsia and get to the members of our audience. <laughs>